Jason and I wrote on one of the bad days. A reminder that he who calms the storms could also calm any anxiety it's called anchor. In every storm, your love defeats all my fears. When lies we may draw, you fight the battles for me. When I think of the promise, there's a peace that I cannot. Has settled on the frame. It's been a few days. You kept me away. Things are not the same. It's true what they say. Everything feels fake. Stuck in a bad dream. But I can't run away from here. I've said all.
the drugs, he was always fighting for me, even if it meant fighting my mom and his family. And so basically, um, he tried to kidnap me from my mom, and when I was three, they were annulled, and my mom hid me from Manila to Olongkapo. And so, nung lumipat po kami ng Olongkapo, um, we were basically hiding. We were hiding in my school. We were hiding in my in a relative's place, and I remember nothing from my childhood. And whenever I see kids with their dads, it makes me feel like God. Bakit ako bilang ganyan? Like, what did I do to deserve having a broken family? Um, and then September 14, 2000, year 2000. My mom remarried, oh sorry, she remarried May 2000. And September 14 of the same year, she taught me my very first verse, which was trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And I was seven at the time and I still remember that moment because she told me this. I know you don't understand everything that's happening in your life, but I need you to trust the Lord. And there are going to be so many times in your life that you're not going to understand what is happening, but I need you to trust the Lord. And so that was the night na I accepted si Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That was September 14, 2000. Fast forward to when I was 12, I was now the only child that wasn't my stepdad's. And having two other kids in the house, lagi kong nafe-feel na iba ako. Kasi ako lang yung anak ng parents ko. But my stepdad, who I never ever acknowledged as my stepdad, because he is my dad, um, he started pursuing me. And then that's when I found out and understood the meaning of pursuit. And when I was 12, I became anorexic because I was bullied in school for being chubby. Um, I was ng four to six months. And I, I lost weight from 140 pounds to 80 pounds in just that long, that short of time. And one night, my mom went into my room. Then I was in my room. I didn't want to sleep because I was in my um, and I just pretended I was asleep and then she just prayed for me and she started crying. And then at that moment I realized, why am I doing this? So the next morning, 
Mais elle est toute plus à... Ça y est. Did you know I'm beginning an Mexico and I wrote my very first song ever. And this was the second time I accepted Christ and said, you're not just going to be my savior from now on, you're going to be my Lord. And so I, I wrote my first song, it's called After Your Heart. And basically, it's about running the race and just trusting God. And as a young kid, I missed I was grateful for my daddy, John, which is my stepdad, but I still missed my dad. And I was grateful for my mom, but I still felt out of place in my own home. And I still believed, still felt different um, until I wrote this song. And this is the moment that I knew that I was going to worship inside and outside of church. And the song goes on. Cause I don't wanna go somewhere else. I wanna run towards you. I don't wanna look away. Cause my eyes are set on you. I don't wanna live for someone else. Cause you gave a brand new start And these feet will keep on going I'm after your heart So that song is basically um, my, <coughs> my commitment song to the Lord That no matter what happens, no matter um, what life brings my way, maging successful man ako or hindi, mahanap ko man yung daddy ko or hindi, I'm gonna keep going. Because you are faithful regardless. And, and then, you know, just like all our Christian walks, there are highs and there are lows. And um, I was 14 when I signed with my cornerstone, with my, with my management. That was 11 years ago. And um, experience ko po na ang daming, um, ang daming nag audition with me na ka-age ko. Tapos ako lang yung, siguro 14 kami nun. Tapos silang 13 na nakukuha. Tapos ako hindi. Kasi mukha daw ako nga nung mukha daw taga-ulong ko po. Kasi hindi ako. Kaya na sabihin nun, di ba? Uh, and so, yung insecurity ko po, nag-grow, na nag-grow, na nag-grow, na I'm never gonna be enough. I'm never gonna look that way. I'm never gonna sound that the way they want me. Never ako makabit it. And that became such a strong, painful thing that I carried. Um, when I turned 16, my dad surprised me. My real dad surprised me in um, the birthday of my nanay. I don't know if it's the birthday of my nanay. I didn't know if it's the birthday of my For the first time, I met my best friend. And it was like nothing ever happened. My dad told me that he, when I, was, when I turned 18, he told me that um, he showed me in, in Las Vegas. Then, that's my other home. He showed me his church. He showed me how stable his family is. And my sisters, they grew up knowing me and knowing that I exist. And whenever I'm with them, it's like I was never gone at all. And it's so amazing how the Lord can take something so broken and then present it to you years after as if it was never harmed at all. And I remember thinking to myself, how did my dad become one of the number one most wanted in the Philippines for selling drugs and taking drugs or whatever, to becoming a faithful husband, a great dad, and a follower of Christ? And my dad just, I look at my dad and I see, God's redemption all over him. Just like he was never, ever who he was before. 
And um, my daddy, John, <laughs> my daddy, John, um, my stepdad, he, he, <laughs> He uh he was a fast he's a pastor in Alongapo. So I grew up as a pastor's kid. And um he taught me most of the things that I know now. Um but we had a really big fight no na boyfriend po ako ng college. <laughs> um I was eighteen and I just moved to Manila. I actually moved to Manila when I was 16 for college. Um, and I was in and out of college because I was always sick, I was depressed, I didn't want to go, I felt out of place, and I just wanted to be alone for a, major, for a chunk of that time. That was not good for young boyfriend go at the time. Um, and it was good until he failed me um, countless times. And so I didn't know what to do. So I put it on the album. And um, during that time, I went into depression again. And because I couldn't get through a class, I didn't get through college, um, I was broke. I, my stepdad and my real dad were fighting over me. Um, I just felt so lonely that I tried to end my life. And there was a whole season where I would just... First time, if you don't get it going, but... Um, <sighs> there was a whole season where I would sit on the edge of her balcony at 2 in the morning just want to jump. And I couldn't find hope anywhere. And it's just that everyone goes through this, the highs and the lows. You get a breakthrough here and then you get a disappointment here. You get an achievement here, but you feel like a failure the moment you get home. And it's just always there, and I just got so sick of it that I wanted to jump. And then there was one time, after months of just trying to hurt myself, I was sitting down, um, it was one Saturday morning, I was sitting down on the floor, on my bed actually, and somebody messaged me this, this, uh, this video of uh, of this worship song and it said Lord you turn my morning into joy you break depression and for at, at that moment I just felt I felt so different and then I saw a vision of myself sitting on the same bed where I was and Jesus was right in front of me and I was showing him my chains. I was still wrapped in chains, and I was like, "Why haven't you set me free yet?" And then he look, he he pointed to the chains, and he showed me that it had been unlocked a long time ago. So he helped me lift it, and we broke it. And then that same morning, my boyfriend at the time called me and said, "Hey." I just woke up, I had a dream about you. You uh, you were on a hill dancing in a white dress. You looked so free. And then an hour later, my mom calls me and she said, Hey, I just woke up, I had a dream about you. You were in a white dress and you looked so free. And then all of a sudden, big up on my orchestra and I'd be playing. The symbolan I practice lang in Manila. Sana sa my garden sa tapat na. Oh, but it is so cool. Let's just think that it is the angels. Um, but but um, that was the very last time I tried to commit suicide. And 
I will be honest with you, the depressive mood still comes, the anxiety still comes, the feeling like a failure still comes, but hope never left my sight ever since. And um, and then my career still wasn't flying, and I was break na po ako sa ex-boyfriend ko. Um, na um, nakasali na po ako sa The Voice. And nung sumali po ako sa The Voice, may gusto silang pasuot sa akin. Sobrang ikli, tas ang dami ruffles. Tapos may nagsabi sa akin, sabi ko, ayoko po suotin yan. Tapos sabi niya, hindi ka naman sisigat, huwag mo lang suotin. So, and that was the same day that I lost at the battlegrounds because the song was too high. And, um, and so I went home. It's like a good sport. Oh, congratulations. Danilapit <laughs> matanggihan. Good job. And then I got home and I cried. And I was like, God, why is everyone getting breakthroughs except for me? Why isn't anything happening? My family is still dysfunctional. My, my relationship was dysfunctional. My career wasn't going anywhere. And then, and then I just called it off. And then my, um, the year after, my label put na and contact someone and wanted to sign me. So I thought that was it, but it still wasn't it. And so I felt like a failure. I was a dropout. I, my album didn't do so well. My family was still a mess. And I was still getting hurt by my ex because I was letting him. Um, and then, and then I went to the States and I recommitted my life to Christ again. Okay. I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I look at all the things that you're not doing, that I fail to do everything that you are doing. And I told God, I said, okay, from now on I'm... From now on, I'm gonna trust you again, like I did in the year 2000. And um, and then I was okay now. That was my bestest friend in the whole wide world. My love passed away two years ago, and I was like, just gonna. Oh, good enough. Um, we were uh, we were the ones who rushed her to the ER. We, she was my constant, and she's the one who kept me going. And then and then she just disappeared. And I don't know if you guys have ever lost anyone, you know, but it hurts. And at that moment, I said, it, it became so obvious to me, my mortality, na ako rin mamamatay someday. It could be any time also. I could die tomorrow, I could die next year, I could die in 20, 30, 40 years. But nonetheless, nothing changes. When I reach that point where I'm about to die, will I be able to say, I lived a full life? Will I be able to say, Will God, be, will God be able to say, well done, my good and faithful servant? And I said, no, you won't. And so at that moment when my Lola died, I went into a slight depressive mode again. And then, one moment, I just realized, If I'm going to reach the end of my life, soon or later, I want to be able to say I lived a life that pleased the Lord. And it was that moment that I remembered my After Your Heart song. And I remembered that 
while my while in my head dysfunctional yung family ko God still took care of me when I thought my family abroad was growing up without me they didn't forget me I had clothes on my body I had food to eat I had my mom and it is so crazy how it made it made I, I realized that there were so many things that I didn't notice just because I kept complaining and it was that moment that I said okay Lord kung, kung dumating ako sa end ng life ko at ganito pa rin yung career ko I will still praise you if wala pa rin nangyari I will still praise you if I don't find the one for me mm-hmm. I will still praise you. And um, so that is how, you know, those are the many moments that I recommitted my life to Christ. So going back to when I broke up with my ex boyfriend, I told God, I don't want to go to the house because I don't want to go to the house. I said, I'm going to go to and and then I told God, I said, no, I'm not. I, if you want me to be celibate, I will be celibate. And then a week later, after that breakup, um, pabalik yung kapi na kanina. A week later, after we both <coughs> broke up, someone prophesied over me. And she said, I sense brokenness. She's never met me. And tago po kasi relationship ko. So alam pong si Lord yan. Kasi hindi niya malalaman yun. Kasi to the parents ko, later na lang nalaman na yung ka-boyfriend ako dahil si Mabi. And then, um, she said, I sense brokenness. But God wants me to tell you that you are going places. And that he, I see uh, your hand and a man's hand being tied with a white ribbon by Jesus himself. So I disregarded that prophecy and I went, I moved on. And then, and then years later, um, I hindi pala. Then I disregarded that the next week, nagpunta po ako sa Crystal Beach kasama si James Moleta at si Jason kasi nakipag-break din po sila sa mga girlfriend nila. So, nag-camp sa way po kami sa Crystal Beach. <laughs> Tapos, um, I think that was when we... Pero huh? super platonic po kami nun kasi dumating po sa point na tumaboy ako sa kanya. Hindi po pag nasa beach ka, hindi ka maliligo. May putok siya na ni. Eh. <laughs> so, sabi na nga, okay, friends. <laughs> <laughs> wala na, wala na siyang ano na. Okay, mabang wala na siyang. Huh? Block shirt. Yung block shirt yung sabi. Anyway. And so the stop time, I was like, I, I don't like this guy. We'll be friends. And so we were friends all those years. He, he never missed my birthdays. He was a constant friend. And I hope I can proofread the messages that he sent me to the people who are in the So when he asked me that one time in December, jogging time, oh my god, this is what he said to Christine when he was in the Christine. So I was like, something's changing. I was cringe. Na ako. And then, and then, um, dapat po mag-hangout kami, punta kami yung bagyo, kami yung tatlo, ako, si Jason, si Nate. Eh, hindi daw pwede si Nate. Huh? Tagay tayo. Ay, sorry, tagay tayo. And so, we, we were eating, and then, like, si Snapchat po siya, tapos, tapos, tinuro niya dun sa onion rings, tapos sa akin. Tapos, hindi niya ata na alam, pagkita ko sa Snapchat ko, hindi ko alam kung anong mas masarap. Ito ba? O si... Or, or yung kasama ko? 
Tapos medyo nagulantang po kasi wala bang pag-aaminan, wala bang feelings, kaya tapos yun pala, hindi niya dapat sinori, isi-send lang pala niya sa friends niya. Kadiri yun daw. Uh, and then, nagtumuloy pa rin po kami sa Tagaytay, tapos sabi niya, sabi niya, gawa tayo yung kanta. And then po kami nag-subtly nag-aminan sa kanta ng Mundo Yung. Um, ano yung kanta natin? Ano yung kanta natin? ever because I my me and my band messed up where my band wasn't there. Hello guys. By the way. Um and I had such a bad time and I felt such a failure and he picked me up and then he brought me to a cafe, to an ice cream shop. And then he told me before anything else, I want you to know and it's happening. <laughs> ah. Before anything else, I need you to know that you are not my goal. And that my goal is to worship the Lord and I was hoping I could do it with you. <laughs> and then and then um there was a song that he was playing on the radio. And it was arithmetic by Brooke Fraser. And it, it, it basically says that God is the sum of everything. And that you don't want anyone else but God. And that was, I remember that was my song when I was 15 and I first prayed for my future husband. And while that was playing on my desktop, the line wire, I don't know if you guys know that. Um, <laughs> I was reading Isaiah 43, 19. Nine. Isaiah 43, 19. Anyway, it says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. And this is also the word that God gave to me when I broke up with my ex-boyfriend. And I said, I want to be sad a bit. But God said, no, there's hope, because I am going to do a new thing. None of the things that you experienced with your ex-boyfriend, none of the things you experienced with your dad. No brokenness. New. Hopeful. Full of me. And so Jason never knew this, because we were close, but we were not girlfriends. So he didn't know the details until... Um, that moment when he played arithmetic and I said, I remember this moment when I prayed for my future husband, this is playing, and now someone's making his intentions clear to me. And so he, he told me, don't answer yet, don't let me know if I can court you or not, tomorrow I'm gonna bring you to your family in Olongapo. So, pinag-drive niya po ako sa Olongapo, tapos tinanong siya ng daddy ko, who met him for the very first time, ano ba intentions mo sa anak ko? Sabi ni Jason, Sir, I want to marry your daughter. 
So ako po, one day ka lang. <laughs> Wait lang, God, you know? And, um, but he had to go home to Paranaque kasi may yung kalabasa ng nanay niya na sa trunk na so hindi na mas maluto yung kare-kare. But then, basically, my dad gave him his blessing for the very first time ever. And fast forward to two weeks later, I was praying for him and God gave me so many words. And I said, God, why now? If ever siya na nga, why now? And God said, it's for my kingdom. And then that same night, no, pinatid ako ni Jason, may binibigay siya sa akin. Kasi a worship leader po si Jason. And so every morning, uh, ay, every time na nagsaserve siya, mga 7 a.m. yung call time niya. He doesn't like waking up early. So he, every time he he does that, it's really out of service and out of his love for the Lord. And then they gave him tokens. Such rich tokens in gift, di ba? And every single token that he got, he gave to me. And so that same day that I, that God told me it's for my kingdom, he brought me home and then he gave me a token. And I opened it. It was a keychain that said, Behold, I am giving you the keys to the kingdom. It's free. And then the next week, um, he told me, kailangan ko na ilabas sa iyo lahat ng baho ko bago mo pa malamig sa iba. Before I let you court, eh, before I let you tell me your decision if I can court you or not, I need you to know what you're getting yourself into. And so he told me his past. Nakala niya masama na yung past niya until sinabi ko sa kanya yung past ko. Tapos sabi niya, masama ka rin pala. Hindi ko alam kung magagalit ba ako, pero wala akong karapatan. Sabi ko, ano, may kababagos na mo bang pagpatuloy ang pagliligaw mo? And lucky me, no? he said yes. And then so he courted me. And in our courtship, there was so much worship. And I remember the very first time na piniliga ko sa kanya was when we were leading worship together. And I said, God, I want to do this for you. And then, flash, uh, flash back, <laughs> fast forward to a month later, he he finally asked me to be his girlfriend. And I've been waiting. And na experience niya po pa yung pag may nag-prophesy sa'yo, nakatenga kang ganun, nagahanap ka ng signs. Yung mga sa akin, white ribbon. Tapos sabi ko, tanong mo kay God kung ano yung hinihintay ko ka sa akin. Kasi, ano, Mahirap na. Tapos sabi niya, red ribbon, uh, yellow. Wala siyang ma, hindi niya ma-figure out at all. And then, and then we were at a coffee shop. And then his notebook, he was showing me his journal. And general niya yung, yung pagpunta niya sa ulong po, yung faithfulness ni God. Ganyan, nilagay niya lahat. And when I closed this notebook, it said, Behold, I am doing a new thing. And he never knew that. And it just felt like, Okay, God, this is you. And I, I really appreciate God being that way because he made sure, he knew my pain and he knew my hurt and he knew everything, all my doubts and everything. So he made sure that I could see him in every gesture that Jason would give. And... On the day that naging kami, was at 2 in the morning, kasi nanood kami ng my ex and wise me. Naka my ex and wise, kumain po kami ng potato corner, which is why. Um, and he asked me to be his girlfriend. And then I told him, wait. Tapos nakipag-facetime po ko sa parents ko. And then, go na! Mga one hour po kami, masagutin mo na eh. I'm not ready for commitment. And then eventually I said yes. And then we worshipped. But that was the very first thing that we did. Oh no, no, you prayed. He prayed for me and he offered a relationship to God. 
and then we worshiped. And we looked up at 2 or 3 in the morning, there was like a jet smoke in the air that was kind of shaped like a real one. And I was like, and then the next day was our first coffee date ever as girlfriend boyfriend he gave me a book that he had meant to give to me three weeks prior but I didn't that morning and when he handed it to me I the first thing I saw was God's pursuit of man and it just tied to the white girl. And I just felt, you know, it's something small. It could have no meaning at all. I could just be putting meaning to it. But to me, that was God's faithfulness speaking to me. I am orchestrating this. You can trust me. And then, fast forward, my lola died. And so, my gulang tang din si Jason. Um, and then my career wasn't going anywhere. But Jason, I saw so much of Jesus in my boyfriend. And then when I, that was, that was, when was that Jason? That was Feb. In March, my Lola died. Yes, my Lola died. And April 1, my Lola died. And then June 1 was the day I recommitted my life to Christ. So going back to the story earlier, I said, God, if, if my life, if the entirety of my life will compose of just a select audience, kung kahit isa lang yung audience na makakantahan ko, ma, ma, masasharean ko ng love one, it's fine. And then, love you to the stars happen. And then, vice can that happen. And then, sunod sunod na po nangyari. And then, star music um, adopted me into their family. Um, and then everything just kept going. And it kept going higher and higher and higher. And then I realized, and then recently, a few months ago, um, I realized that my failures are seen not just by people close to me, but by people I don't even know. Then I realized, do I really want this? Do I, do I want to allow myself to be this vulnerable on a stage where not only people who love me can see me, but people who want to bring me down? And then, and then we worship. And then I realized it's so worth it because I know that this is my calling and and I know that through highs and lows peace is something that God has already given and um, I'm sorry it's a little messed up but basically this this whole, my whole lifetime, my whole lifetime I feel is summed up by the verse Romans 8, 28, where it says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I told you guys my story to show you that it's not just a one-time rise and a one-time fall. It's a constant thing. And I don't know about you, but recently I've been feeling like a failure. And I feel like a disappointment. And it's very tiring to wake up to that every single day. But, but this also has been the season where God has shown me that He is faithful whether in the highs or in the lows. He has taught me real joy. He has taught me real peace. And I just wanted to encourage everybody that He is faithful and that He is our constant. And um, 
this is something that I'm so grateful for because the highlights on Instagram, I highlighted all of my gigs the whole year. And I never watched it until recently and I was just crying. Because the stage that he has given me has allowed me to spread hope, to spread Jesus, to stop people from committing suicide. From, which is so, it's so big now. People just give up and, you know, and, and he has given me that opportunity to stand before these people and tell them, I was there too, but it gets better. It gets so much better. With, um, when Jason proposed to me, I had the chance, Kuya John Prince and I had the chance to inspire through our music video and tell people that just because your past is broken doesn't mean your future has to be. Because the Lord is faithful and the Lord makes all things new. And um, so I just want to leave you guys with something. His pursuit never stops. And neither should yours. And whenever I feel like giving up, I worship. When um, I was in, when I was diagnosed with depression, I was given meds, and meds didn't work. It never worked. But worship did. Worship did. And it keeps me going. It helps me get through the bad times, and it helps me feel the good times. Sometimes you're numb. And sometimes it just gets tiring to feel everything, whether it's good or bad. But knowing that Jesus is behind it, knowing that He is with you always, and that there's a purpose to all of this, it takes away that stress, it takes away that doubt, it takes away that, that feeling of, is there a point to any of this? And there is. And, and lastly, I just, I just wanted to encourage you guys, to keep going because he makes all things beautiful in his time. And I know that one of the main reasons why God even allowed me to step foot on this big stage is that so that he can prove to us, to me also, that anything is possible and that he is faithful. This is Jason. This is my band, by the way. They have been my band for four years. <coughs> Except for Jason. He's just a newbie. <laughs> and this is a song that um, I wrote for Victory Worship. This is a... Uh, this is inspired by all those moments hiding and trying to kill myself. <laughs> and realizing that amidst all of the pain and all of the heartbreak and the chaos and the bullies, there is one place that I will always be safe in, and it's His presence. Mm -hmm.